Well, before the break, we asked our studio audience, most of the world has outlawed human trafficking and child labor. Is it true or false? And here's how they voted. 82% said it was false that most of the world has outlawed it. Our next guest, Jamie McIntosh, is the Executive Director of International Justice Mission Canada. IJM works for the justice of victims in slavery from sexual exploitation and other forms of oppression. So Jamie, you guys are the expert on this. What is the right answer, true or false? Most of the world has outlawed human slavery. Yeah, well, I think the, uh, the audience actually would have answered in the same way I would have answered a number of years ago. Um, the reality is uh, laws against slavery are ubiquitous, but slavery is also ubiquitous. Um, in fact, most countries have outlawed slavery all around the world, but um, all, there are some 40% of countries to this day that have not registered a single human trafficking conviction in memory. And yet there's 27 million people. They tell us the number is going to go up again next year. Google just gave you guys $11 million to say, get to work on fixing this. Tell us what you've seen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the investment from Google into us and some other partners um, is to help address um, forced labor. You've got a man with his daughter walking behind, um, but what's happening here is they're just working on a rice mill, but they're doing this under the crushing debt load of, of slavery and under the watchful eye of a master who may beat them, not allow them to leave. Here's another situation in Southeast Asia where you'll have 12, 14, 15 year old girls on offer for sex, um, $10 a piece, $100 a piece, depending whether they're virgins, depending who the customers are. These are people who are being bought and sold, trafficked for obscene profits um, by other people who would prey upon their vulnerability. Both countries that you just showed us have laws against human trafficking. Crystal clear laws. Why does it still go on? Well, there is this incredible lack of enforcement, and several reasons exist for the lack of enforcement. Sometimes it's a, a lack of capacity. Um, sometimes it's a lack of priority. Sometimes there's not a social demand. Uh, and in other contexts, there are um, you know, people who are, are so complicit in this at high levels that um, the endemic levels of corruption can allow there to be a shroud or a shelter around it. So you need to penetrate that and get to the truth, get to the facts, the reality on the ground, and find where people are held in, in, in these shackles, held in slavery, and break them free. Okay, I want to get to one of those roots. And uh, we, during the break here, uh, everyone at home, we always have a great discussion with our studio audience, and Deb was, continued her conversation with us from Young Street Mission, and Deb was telling us that she knows of parents in Canada who are selling the children that are coming into Young Street Mission. She's seen them as young as four being sold to pimps. I want to show you some footage of when I went to Cambodia recently and saw parents there that were gambling and then the debt gets too high. They sell their children. I went to a church, only children in it, hoping, praying People like us would make a difference. I uh, just broke my heart mm. as, um, you know, I was able to work with the, the wonderful missionary in charge of this and get a couple of kids taken to a shelter that mm. night. Mm -hmm. But that week, one of them was sold. Mm. And I think the root cause, we have got to address people's hearts. Well, it's interesting. There, there, you know, Martin Luther King Jr. was a keen observer of injustice that was running rampant in his day. And he said that the law may not make a man love me, for that religion and education are required. But the law can keep him from lynching me. And he went on to say, I think that's pretty important. And so what he did was he realized that you could actually use the rule of law to help set millions of people free. You could change this whole social structure without having to wait for somebody to, to come to a revolution of love. But it doesn't mean you have to uh, leave love aside or leave the opportunity to educate, to equip, to help address some of the, the broken social systems as well. So it's really, you know, there is a need for justice, there is a need for mercy, uh, and there's a need for working together, governments, NGOs, working to educate, working to uplift, but also working to protect. Okay. When we come back, we'll find out what can be done when you put legislation together with faith and get on-the-ground advocacy for justice, that when we come back. Are you planning to be in the Toronto area and want to watch a live taping of the show? Lorna invites you to be her guest. Email tickets at contextwithlorna.com or call 416-599-9777, extension 33, for more information. 
kinds of families that sell the children among all the, the families I've ever worked with. The greedy, they want a TV, they want some jewellery, they, they have gambling habits to support and they have alcoholism and the parents don't want to work. They feel it's their right to um, live off the children. That's a clip from Cambodia, an interview with Ruth Elliott, founder of Daughters of Cambodia. And uh, Jamie, we're concluding our program today on human trafficking because it's not just the human heart in Cambodia mm -hmm. that can be so broken that mm -hmm. it would sell their children. We have evidence today that it also happens amongst Canadian families and all over the world mm -hmm. where there's 27 million people mm -hmm. in slavery. What do we do about the broken human heart? Well, it's interesting. I think first we need to recognize that, that there is great brokenness in human hearts everywhere and in human society. We need to be about the work of what Oscar Romero called the violent revolution of love, where we need to engage in, in building up, binding up the brokenhearted, but also binding up the broken uh, justice systems and uh, find a way that, that children can be free to be children, where parents can um, be uplifted to be the parents that they dream to be. And this is why I love to see the Christian mission agencies like yours, like the others we've featured. Because if you do not go in and say, here is the tool to bind up the broken, it is actually realizing Jesus gave you everything we need to start new, mm -hmm. to start over on this. Mm -hmm. Jamie, um, if we are to live like that, to actually be able to move into bringing the gift of God's healing, what is it going to take? Well, I think uh, the prophet Micah uh, summed it up quite nicely when he said, what, uh, O mortal, uh, is required of you, but to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk in humility with your, with your creator. The reality is we're all, in some senses, broken, um, but we can also um, enter in and help bind up the brokenhearted. But through that, be prepared to be broken yourself because you will see things that you wish you did not see, um, and uh, you will go places where um, you will not want to go, but in those places of darkness, uh, we can sow seeds of, of light and of hope. And uh, when we actually see the laws put in place and love uh, lifting children up, we can not only see rescue and protection and prevention, but great restoration and hope begin to break forth. And we're seeing it in country after country after country um, around the world today. Okay, Jamie McIntosh from International Justice Mission, thank you very much. And uh, you can go deeper on this subject. We have a special documentary where I've interviewed Jamie's colleagues in Cambodia, my trip to Cambodia. Uh, it's a series we have called Kids for Sale. You can uh, make a special order to our viewer feedback line or send us an email or leave us a video message. We would love to help get you more educated on this issue. We'll just have to keep doing an episode at least once a year until there's a finally a decrease in the number of slaves in the world. Well, for the team at Context, I'm Lorna Duick. Thanks for watching.